Machine, turn back. Oh my God! Holy s***, dude, what's the matter? What happened? What's going on? There's so much- Artistic new- Hear me out. I love live streams. And I enjoy Twitch. At least, not anymore. This is actually trash! Why is that? Well, we need a bit of a deep dive. Read! Back in my old days, fellas would generally view all media content pre-recorded. Let's plays, animations, vlogs, funny skits. But with the growth of Twitch and live streaming platforms, live entertainment has become a staple across the scene. It's a great way for creators to produce live content or professionally steal it. But Twitch has always had problems. We, we all know this. Well, over the years, there's a massive problem running rampant on the platform. A problem that plagues it even as I write the script. Their policies on sexual content and the way they allow it. On a platform labeled 30 13 and up. And recent developments have quite literally exposed how incompetent Twitch really is. Ayo, hey, it's the Lado, that fallen angel kicked out of heaven. Get some snacks, get some water, get your tier 3 sub. And without a doubt, here's why Twitch is an absolute dumpster fire. Hey, I like that title drop. Shut your bitch ass up! Fellas, it's a little important we talk about Twitch's history to understand how we got here. So, it's rewind time. In 2007, back before some of y'all fellas were born, by the way, Justin Gunn, Emmett Shear, Michael Siebel, and Kyle Vogt traveled to San Francisco and founded the live streaming site Justin.tv. When it first originated, Gunn hosted a singular channel broadcasting a 24-7 show of his life. The idea brought tons of curiosity and possibilities, and eventually the site was relaunched. At that point, thousands of channels could broadcast themselves to an unlimited number of people in different categories. One category stood above the rest, gaming. Important for later. Years later, in June 2000, 2011, the Twitch open beta was launched, designed specifically for gamers, and that started Twitch's route to greatness. The domain grew heavily in popularity, Amazon picked them up in 2014, and several new features were added like subs, raids, mods, the list goes on. Twitch even began to branch outside of solely gaming, adding new categories like art, music, just chatting, and fitness. Then came the pandemic of 2020. Boom! Several people lost their jobs in social space, so Twitch's traffic shot up even further. The following year, it doubled its amount of streamers and nearly doubled the number of concurrent viewers. And now it's pretty much 2024. Twitch at this point is at the top of live streaming and will likely continue looking down for years to come. Why is any of this important other than to get more watch time ad revenue? The game is the game. Twitch was first built to be a gaming-centric platform and is the go-to place for live content. But Twitch isn't just a platform for gaming anymore. It's a website for all things live stream. And business-wise, they kind of have to do that. And not just because their numbers are stagnating. Social media platforms generally want to hit several niches. And as a business, you aim for the highest profit possible by including the most products that are available. Offering different avenues for other creative types opens up newfound content and life opportunities. And for businesses, it gives another chance at big revenue. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah. Regardless, media platforms open up different content. Podcasts, cooking, ASMR, and in many cases, one that toes the line of controversy every month. Simp content content that influences lonely men to donate the highest buck for an e-girl's personal favors. That's where a lot of this controversy started, huh? Twitch's audience is primarily filled with men, so female streamers heavily stand out, and in general, they receive countless amounts of sexual harassment, like it's ass. A two-pack of ass. Many Twitch girls are judged and harassed by male viewers for their appearance. Not enough makeup, not putting up a good face, pickup lines, unwanted approaches. It's a tough lifestyle when several just want to chill and have fun playing games. However, some female streamers see the male audience as a perfect target for business. 2017 began the big rise of e-girl content and quote-unquote streamers on Twitch. These handful of female creators strategically use the male gaze in their content to their advantage. Their looks and bodies are tools to attract the most viewers, achieve the most sims, and receive the most donations. And these girls know they can make bank off it. Like y'all remember when Belle Delphine made 10 million off of selling her bathwater? How does it work on Twitch though? To start off, some female streamers would make their face cam big and direct a view to their chest. Others would do bits that show off their figures, and sub would even toe the lines to potential softcore. The term t streamer was used by Twitch fans for such female streamers, usually in a derogatory way to demean their content. Beyond that, however you want. This type of content isn't solely a Twitch special. Look deep enough on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter, especially Twitter, and you'll see tons of suggestive content meant to grab male attention. But back to simp content. To keep the press, several would participate in trends 
streams and metas. Most notably in recent years was 2021's Hot Tub Meta. During these streams, countless female streamers wear bikinis, sit in hot tubs, get inflatables, and interact with thousands of viewers making thousands upon millions. And their views blew up, most notably being Amaranth. Others would go even further and get OFs on the side for their fans. More cast than they'd ever made on their main content platforms. Let me ask, do you make more on Twitch or on, uh, in two one. months, I've made what I would have made in 10 years on Twitch. But how do people feel about this content? Is against it, allowing it, or... We do not care. <laughs> First, the argument against. It is a fact that Twitch was first designed predominantly for gaming and enjoyed by gamers. So when those streamers quote, steal views and manipulate these lonely gamers into their graphs, it's a disgusting act. This used to be a goddamn community of gamers, nerds, kids that got bullied, kids that got with. Now it's ran by the goddamn same that rejected us coming into our community, taking the money, taking the subs, the same way they did back in the day. That. And not only is the platform 13 plus, but such content sets a bad precedent for other female streamers. That's that argument. Then there's the allowance of it or we don't care. It is also a fact that Twitch's audience is predominantly men. So they're just promoting to that audience and supplying demand. The game is the game. And women are quote, always going to be victims of patriarchy and objectification, no matter what they do. Why can't some girls use that to their advantage? It's hard for girl streamers in the Hata Meta is making worse. Uh, I actually disagree. Like Hata Meta appeals to a different audience and that audience is not mine. I don't look at girls or anybody who are who's partaking in Hatsumana and thinking like you're making it worse for women. If anything, you're just taking advantage of the patriarchy. You fucking go queen, get that bag. And finally, quote, how does this affect LeBlanc's legacy? Oh yeah, what does Twitch feel about this? The funny thing is, Twitch doesn't even know themselves. Or rather, they know, but they're inconsistent. One hand, they'll allow blatant TOS abuse, then in some cases, ban others for slip-ups and misconceptions. What is considered okay and not okay? Why is this suggestive content in the same categories as other normal content? Why are we even testing the balance of sensual content on a platform 13 and up. Many questions were directed at Twitch, and Twitch still doesn't know how to deal with it. Someone did a live stack. It was banned for only a week. What is going on? Over the years, new trends would appear, cam streamers moved to just chatting without any consequence, and the TOS would be pushed to their limits for years. And in December of 2023, one meta would expose the Twitch problem to the national stage. On December 2nd, a clip began circulating my Twitter timeline. Popular Twitch streamer Kai Sanat was found reacting to OF model and Twitch streamer Asian Bunny clapping her. Yeah, that's the clip. This is the earliest instance I've found of the topless meta, a trend where cam streamers would appear topless on camera, showing their shoulders and upper chest with suggestive movements. They are wearing clothes under the camera view, but they're also implying being naked. Yeah, so Asian Bunny X maybe started the meta? I could totally be wrong about this, but it's my guess. Either way, she wasn't the poster child who hit news articles. That honor goes to Morikpai, another OF model and Twitch streamer. Yeah, you're also seeing the trend here. On December 8th, a clip of Morkpai doing the trend and a streamer's reaction went completely viral. What is this meta? Titan, thank you for the tier three. Thank you, thank you. And it wasn't like Morkpai and Asian Bunny X were outliers. Several popular cam streamers began participating in the meta and this was taking Ooh. over the main Twitch page. A lot of it just being recommended to you. You can't escape! You can't escape! Morkpai, being the hot topic of the discussion, rode the wave in her favor and even defended herself and others from the crowd. I do wear a shirt and pants in all of the streams. It's just the implied nudity that um, really freaks people out. A part of the toss does list that certain like explicit content isn't allowed, but people stream sex in video games all the time. And, you know, people do have sexual discussions on the platform constantly, men and women. They allow content, but at the same time they don't. With the vagueness of the toss, people are going to find loopholes regardless because they do allow sexual content and sexual themes on the site. Overall, the response to these streamers was yeah! Several creators spoke out against the events occurring, some did the trends themselves to mock Twitch, and other viewers attacked the streamers directly. Even other s workers came forward about this, because they usually keep that spicy content for other websites. And sure, Morikpai and other streamers doing the meta were banned, but those bans were only one to three days. Basically a free vacation with twice the press on return, and continuing pushing TOs moving forward. Because Twitch's enforcement on those policies is shit inconsistent. Can I talk my Can shit talk again? My One has been banned six times times over nine months for continually pushing guidelines, yet their longest ban is three days. Twitch, what will you do about this problem?
problem. I saw three routes. One, Twitch implements a separate adult section and raises the age rating on their platform. Two, Twitch locks down and bans inappropriate content. Three, Twitch doubles down, changes policies, and lets its content slide because it's making the mad bank. Which I swear to God. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talk. On December 13th, Twitch responded to feedback and criticisms and changed their guidelines. Starting that same day, the sexually suggestive content and sexually explicit content policies were consolidated into one sexual content policy. A lot of content previously prohibited was now allowed with a content classification label. This includes content that highlights specific areas, fictionalized fully exposed breast, genitalia, or buttocks to support the artist community, body writing on female presenting bodies, dances like twerking and pole grinding, and even motions like disrobing and striptease. Reasons for this update? Twitch states they were quote, out of line with industry standards resulting in female presenting streamers being disproportionately penalized. Oh really? <laughs> Hell, they even addressed the topless meta by name. I wanted to touch on the um, meta that we're seeing, the topless meta. Bro, they named it. They said the topless meta. Now, not all CD was completely allowed. Streamers still had attire rules and even augmented anime avatars like VTubers still had the same rules. Also, content with CCL was not included in homepage recommendations due to its thumbnails and visual nature. But as we get into it later, that was a lie. In conclusion, Twitch opened the gates, and a term coined by Dexerto was artistic nudity. The response was interesting. Some artists welcomed the changes for freedom of illustration, but others were worried that the rules were clear enough and if they'd be banned. Some celebrated the changes to the label, seeing it as a way for everyone to succeed. Others were repulsed at Twitch's negligence for allowing more explicit content. Me personally, I don't know. I more so just wanted consistency and equal enforcement of the set policies for everyone. And these new terms can be hella pushed. But you know, maybe I'm the weird one. Maybe I'm just tripping and I'm just on some wild sh Surely this is a perfect fix and everything will be perfectly fine. Well, welcome to hell, motherfucker! This made everything worse. I know this angel has fallen and has left heaven, but please let me back! What's going on? There's so much. Artistic nudity was allowed on Twitch from 2.26 p.m. on December 13th to 10.06 a.m. on December 15th. That is roughly 44 hours, and those were the worst 44 hours to be on that platform. There's no way out of this one. I don't have everything saved, but as a first class witness, can I go over every single crazy thing I saw? Got it, got it. It was filled with endless amounts of So much I know. So Tons of streams filled with softcore and hardcore content. Just chatting streams filled with endless amounts of sensual streamers. People sucking toes on stream. Restreamed twerking compilations. Like not even live twerkers, just YouTube compilations. People were that lazy. People misinterpreted the term artistic to mean all types of exposed content. Point. You cannot do that. So everywhere was a nightmare. Examples include VTubers streaming themselves completely exposed, arts, lewd art, and everything. Artists unknowingly pushing TOS, drawing all types of furry, anime, whatever poor XQC had to run into. I got recommended a stream of Peter Griffin bending over, revealing his goatsy style with a freaking peg inserting into him. People were streaming anime. FW art compilations with AI depictions of other women, live reactions to R plus anime like High School DXD, and some were just streaming off websites, like not even some suggestive such just an H anime website. They reached 1.8 concurrent viewers. Twitch's art page broke its viewing record. Everyone was watching that dumpster fire. Some people in antis had enough. Art streamers were sent massive amounts of hate raids and mass reported to be kicked off Twitch. And it got to the point where every artist that drew anything quote unquote suggestive was banned. People drawing human sculptures were banned. People drawing safe for work art were banned. Welcome to the state of Twitch. So Twitch rolled it back. Rewind time. Stop it off. Yeah. What kind of post not clarity is this? Hey y'all, come look at this. They rolled it in and rolled back their update in less than two days. <laughs> Abused by countless streamers aiming for any type of clout or internet points. <laughs> so, where does that leave Twitch now? Reverting that policy fixed the controversy surrounding sexual content, right? <laughs> I should probably mention that I only got rid of 
artistic duty. The main problem is still taking over the platform as I record this. Literal days after the policy updated, a new cam meta was introduced on Twitch, the sensor bar meta. Twitch streamers would take it further and put sensor bars over their chest and groin regions. While yes, they are wearing stuff under them, the message was sent. The controversial meta would continue. These streamers plastered the Twitch page. I saw one with 30,000 viewers. Anytime I opened up just chatting or recommended, I would still be jump scared by bodies. Several people were understandably furious about this. The most viewed thing on Twitch right now is three naked women. This is This website's for children for sake. And in some cases, people were wearing physical sensor bars. And I don't think there was clothes underneath. But yeah, I, I want to add this because this post physically and mentally harmed me. A commentator was happy that women on Twitch were pushing the boundaries owned by men and called them modern day Rosa Parks or MLK. I know Black History Month is in a few, but I need my reparations now for experiencing this. Twitch would ban some streamers for pushing TOS, and some were swiftly unbanned in less than a day. I have never seen anyone banned for less than a day. That is like sitting a kid in timeout. Oh yeah, guys were getting in on this too. You know, gender equality, right? I apologize for what your eyes had to see throughout this entire video. Be grateful that I'm at least trying to cover this all up, despite still being demonetized. I saw a clip of Boogie completely naked. Naked. Researching and making this entire video has mentally harmed me. But Toledo, you've just recounted the events. What is your overall take on this situation? Well, let's talk about it. I want to make this clear. I am pro worker. I am all about any person, guys, girls, and non-binary fellows using their assets to get a bag. I even have another video where I entail sus creators in the VTuber industry. So I don't F with what's occurring on Twitch. Mainly because this is not what Twitch is for. For countless years, Twitch has been a platform focused on games, hobbies, communities, and creative type content. Not oh this. God. And this is pushing boundaries way too far. Like there's spicy topics and then there's flashing people. There are separate websites for a streamed adult content and they're purposely not streaming this stuff there. Why aren't they streaming? on check Toledo they purposely do it on Twitch because one there's a bigger audience two they stand out more and three controversy is one of the best ways to grow you wouldn't gain this traction like they have on adult websites and you'd blend in with the others there's also the conversation of Twitch being 13 and up. Let me dissect this a bit. Even though Twitch is labeled 13 and up, Twitch has never been a platform for kids. Like a kid's platform, like for kids, hear me out. Its mean age of its users is like 21 and there's tons of adult stuff easily accessible. For years, there's been drug use, alcohol use, gambling, extreme violence, sexual topics. None of this should be shown to children, but it has been for countless years. This is because Twitch has never had a separate adult section. Just a quote unquote intended for mature audience marker that is easily accessible. Kind of goes for other platforms too. Twitter and Tumblr allow completely unfiltered adult content and you can sign up as early as 13. But if you look at where they're marked, they aim for 17 and up. The easiest solution for like everyone would be for Twitch to raise its age ranging to 17 plus and maybe make a separate adult section. But doing that loses advertisers if what's happening on Twitch hasn't lost them already. Or they could just ban inappropriate content due to some younger users, but that's a loss of money for Twitch and they ain't doing that. Even several adult users of the platform don't want to see this type of content. And it's not like people are prudes, people just didn't sign up for this. But the point is there, a good portion of Twitch's audience does not like this being on their feed. Look, I'm not a guy to go on some moral grandstanding crusade. Even if I talk about an issue in a spear, it's usually me just talking trash. I'm not gonna dehumanize or demonize these people. I think women taking control of their bodies after how the industry has dehumanized and abused them for multiple years is a power move. But I don't support advertising and directing towards that content on Twitch. Not a chance in hell. You are advertising this to audiences that shouldn't see it and kids until Twitch puts a proper filter. That's the main problem though, Twitch. And I feel like people should put more attention on Twitch here rather than just the girls. Twitch for countless years 
has made several changes and showcased many signs of double standards. And these girls are gaming the system in their favor. If anything, capitalism is to blame for a lot of this. So who should I be most mad at here? The creators who take advantage of their freedoms to plaster all audiences, or the platform that continuously does everything against their creators and viewers' wishes so they can make the most profit? Yeah, I'm mad at everyone, but what do you think? I'm most mad at the corporation. Twitch has shown that it is not community and creator first. They will not listen, and they will change up standards in their favor to get what they want. They'll just hand out temp bans and let this content fester until a major profit fallout causes a change. And I think this situation has exposed what Twitch is all about. Twitch is an absolute dumpster fire. So where does that leave us? Twitch will be Twitch. It is what it is. I'm here to entertain and commentate on media chaos no matter the platform. But hey, happy year year. I hope for your continued support into more media and entertainment. Like the video and subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comments on this interesting topic. Do all that and you'll get a tier 3 sub. Shut your bitch ass up.